Welcome to Houston Life. We are now joined by one of the best opera singers of our time. Performing in Houston for the next few days, please welcome Talise Trevine and Houston Grand Opera dramaturg Paul Hopper. Okay, first, Paul, I got to ask you, what is a dramaturg? Uh, the <laughs> easiest way to describe it would be the resident opera nerd. Uh, my job is to know everything about the performances and share it with our audiences and our, our patrons. Wow, well, you look like anything but a nerd. But you two, <laughs> from what I understand, you two play nicely together, you work well together, and there's a performance coming up this weekend, which is why you're saving your voice. I have a Please. performance tonight. Oh, tonight. Tonight. One last night as well. So yeah. busiest woman in show business <laughs> right here. Fantastic. So tell us about the show. Uh, it's a Wonderful Life had its world premiere, uh, the operatic adaptation just last Friday by Jake Heggie and Gene Shear. And it's, of course, an adaptation of the famous 1946 Frank Capra film that a lot of families turn to this time of year. But it's a fresh new interpretation for the operatic stage starring uh, Talise as the angel Clara. I was going to say, but the, the, the angel role in the film is, you know, is, is a male. And this Clarence, is written, yeah. written specially for you. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's a treat. Um, to be able to, uh, this, I've been watching this film since I was about six, and uh, my family we watch it every year. And when I, they first told me that they were writing the opera, and they said, "So we want you to be the angel." And I thought, "Hmm, another boy role," because I was a boy in their last <laughs> opera. I said, "I thought you said this one would be a girl." They said, "Oh, well, we're going to make her Clara." So it's been lovely because Clarence is such an important figure. Yeah. So I've had the luxury of not having to carry the weight of, of his work. And I could create my own character in Clara. So it's been, it's been lovely. I mean, what an honor to have a role completely rewritten or tailored to you and your talent. I think that speaks to what you can do there with those pipes of yours. <laughs> now, people maybe remember you from Moby Dick, which I know is a, a critical role for you. Is there anything over the course of your career that really is a standout for you personally? Actually, I would say, Moby Dick really was um, a very, and continues to be a special point in my life. Um, so many bonds were formed. It was such an amazing experience to create that role. I love the story of Moby Dick. I actually read it again for a third time before the show. Um, and to be working with colleagues that are like family to me, but who are so um, brilliant at what they do. Jake Hagee and Jean Shear are fantastic. So to have the honor of doing what I love to do and have something written especially for me is it's well, everything. You are world yeah. renowned. I mean, you're one of the best opera singers in the world. I want to know, how did you get into it? How did you <laughs> start in opera? It was an accident. It really, it really was an accident. It was, I was desperate to get out of California and <laughs> I, I applied last minute um, and went out for an audition in San Francisco and was offered a scholarship and a position straight away. I knew nothing about singing. I spent my entire freshman year crying before every voice lesson. No way. So, yeah, I felt like a complete fraud. I mean, I was surrounded by kids that were child prodigies and had known so that this is what they wanted to do. where the scholarship was too. Manhattan School of Music. Manhattan School Pretty of impressive. Music. You know, Jennifer's asking this career advice because her next career is that of an opera singer, right? Um, and Paul, I was you already can... telling her I got one opera note that I try to do and I do it badly. <laughs> You're not that bad. Don't um, tempt me, I'll sing it. Now, Paul, you are also a singer. You're a tenor, right? Yes. And describe a little more of your role with the Grand Opera then, because part of that is also doing outreach in the community and doing sort of like like group discussions, I understand? Exactly. Uh, I do a lot of speaking engagements because a lot of people have the misconception that opera is this faraway art form that is difficult to digest in one sitting. Uh, so one of my main jobs is to break down that barrier. Uh, I offer pre-curtain lectures 45 minutes before any of the performances. So if you come see It's a Wonderful Life, you can come hear a little bit of the context of the piece. Uh, after our matinee last week, and I had the privilege of interviewing Talise and Bill Burden, who plays the role of George Bailey in a post-show so artists talk back. Uh, so I really get to support the art form that we put on stage at the Wortham Theater Center. That I is think so sometimes cool. folks think it's always oh, so hoity toity and I won't understand because you know so many operas are yeah. written in, in other languages. What would you say to folks to not not at all. In fact, I do remember at when we were having curtain the taking our bows at the end, I saw so many children in the audience and I was just overwhelmed with joy to see so many kids that were A still awake and they were totally <laughs> into it and they were waving and um, it really I mean especially with 
this piece, which is it's such a, a, a memorable story and something that everyone can relate to. Um, it, there are sur titles. I mean, there's everything there to help you, but the story is so wonderful. So it's perfect for families. I mean, I. I cannot stress that enough. And the music that Jake Heggie, the composer, writes is this beautiful, gorgeous, lyric, lyrical, and very accessible music. Uh, some of the tunes are so catchy, especially there's a dance number called the Mecky Mecky. Uh, and I, I, I love that you're laughing about it. You just giggle. Because it's so contagious uh, that yeah. I think most of the audience members are probably dancing the Mecky Mecky on the way out the door after. Dancing uh, the Mecky Mecky. Oh my mm. goodness. I wish we had time for you to show New us what that is. New dance move for you to learn. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> So the show runs through uh, December 17th, December right? 17th, so about right. a week, yes. week left to go. Yes. Awesome. There's the info right there on your screen, folks. Tonight is a performance through, again, December 17th. Show starts tonight at 7 p.m. Tickets start at $28. Which is not bad at all. Not bad for the Very opera. Very approachable there. Houston Grand Denise Opera. And Paul, Ford. thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having us. To watch you guys live. Uh, you can go here in Houston. You can visit HoustonGrandOpera.org. All right. Thanks again, guys. And coming up next on Houston Live,